Uh, how's everybody doing? Have a good time, right? Nothing like a wonderful mushroom festival. I've always said, anytime I'm around people that have to deal with mushrooms, everyone's happy. Like, everyone's happy. I've never brought anyone miserable on mushrooms, so it's, it's good that you guys are here. Thank you for being patient. Thank you uh, for coming along. If you stop by my booth, Cultivating Wisdom, thank you for stopping by and Cultivating Wisdom with me. Uh, that's what I, I'd like to do. Um, Paul's getting our little slideshow ready, and then we'll start. Um, I'm going to talk about microdosing, uh, about how microdosing changed my life, what microdosing is, um, the importance of intentions, the importance of knowing that there's work to be done, the importance of integration, uh, the realization that um, this, is, this is a tool in a toolbox. This isn't the tool. This isn't you know, uh, a one-man show. So same thing as last time. This is for light. The pointer. And the, the thing is over here. Okay. So if you're pointing it over there, it's, it's not, not going to work. You got to point that so way. You got to point it this way. Okay. And then down is to go forward. Up is to go backwards. Perfect. So, so backwards, 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 forwards. Backwards, and the floor forward. is yours, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Paul. Everybody, big applause for Paul. I mean, if it's not for him, he puts this together. Hard sweat, tears. Uh, he brings us all together. So, so Paul, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, exactly. We need <laughs> wish.com. Wish.com. Uh, that it, it was the cool thing to do like two years ago, but now there's like a Timu and a, there's a whole bunch of them. One of those little Asian websites that sell stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You buy it and you and you don't think it's ever gonna come in, and then three months later you get that, and then plus a whole bunch of other stuff you didn't order. It's kind of fun. How much get rid of this table for you? Oh, perfect. All right. So. Everyone, everyone can hear me on the Wi-Fi, right? Yes, yes. So what is microdosing? Let me have a raise of hand of people who feel that they have microdosed in the past. Okay. On a protocol? On a microdosing protocol? Okay. How many people whose childhood curiosity has been poked out of what microdosing is because they've read about it, they've heard about it, they've seen a guy with a T-shirt that says microdosing on it, and they're like, wait a minute, what is that about? And how many people are just like, oh, I don't even know why I'm here. Like, what are these psychedelics about? So, what is microdosing? Microdosing is the practice of using a very small amount, a subperceptual amount of a psychedelic substance to find some cognitive awareness, right? Microdosing isn't about tripping. Microdosing is about having journeys. Microdosing isn't about really digging deep inside of who you are, which you can do, obviously, with bigger journeys. So. What are people microdosing? People are microdosing psilocybin, mushrooms. People are microdosing LSD. People are microdosing ayahuasca. People are microdosing peyote. So there's different substances that people are microdosing with. The most common, obviously, is mushrooms. Why? Because it's sort of less offensive, right? It's sort of, it comes from the ground. The universe has given us these medicines. Like, why shouldn't we able to use them? That's why I think microdosing is a bit, through mushrooms, a bit of an entry point into microdosing psychedelics. How did I get here? About a year ago, I'd never had a psychedelic experience in my life. I'm 54 years old, you know, I'm on my way. I am battling a really bad cannabis addiction. Right? I'm at that point where it's like, the cannabis has controlled me, right? I don't have control of the substance, the substance has control of me. Wake up, get high, go to work, get high, get high at work, go home, get high, escape and get high. I was escaping, I was escaping from life. And it just so happens that at that time, plant medicine appeared in my world. I had never known about mushrooms. A couple of people talked to me about mushrooms. I'm like, what are these mushrooms about? I go into it as a recreational curiosity, wanting to get a new high, wanting to get something different. And soon did I realize that there's a lot more to this. And as I had my first awakening, my first experience with psilocybin, sort of I had two and a half grams, I have what I call my awakening. And I realized, wait a minute, this is what my hands feel like, and this is what the air feels like, and this is what the green looks like in the trees. And as this happens, um, at the time I'm working at CNN, and as a good journalist, I'm like, okay, what just happened? And I start investigating, you know, and I realize that people are using psychedelics as medicine. They're using it for depression. They're using it for anxiety. They're using it for PTSD. And I come across this term called microdosing. And I start reading that people are using microdose to get over their substance dependencies or dependencies to other things. And I go in with open heart and I start a microdosing practice back November of last year. 
I read up, I read about protocols, I read about dosage, I read about intentions, I read about integration, and I dive head in first. And it's amazing what it did. It's amazing how I was able to really live in the now, in the present moment, that this is where life begins, right? This is where life is. That this dependency that I had to something, call it alcohol, call it sugar, call it whatever your vice is, that you're able to that moment be conscious enough to say, maybe not right now. Like, I'm okay right now, right? I'm microdosing, you know what I mean? I'm on this sense that life is wonderful. I don't really need that substance. And that's how I was able to use microdosing to one, overcome my cannabis addiction and completely control my cannabis addiction and also reinvent my life at the age of 54. Because what happened was the medicine came into my life right when I was about to lose my job at CNN where I had been for 25 years. And let's be honest, there's not a lot of people hiring 55 year old producers, it just doesn't happen, right? So I found myself in a situation where I could have been drowning in a sea of depression of what happened, if I would have done this, if I would have done that, if I would have taken my boss flowers, maybe I wouldn't have gotten laid off. No, I was gonna get laid off, that's what the universe had for me. Or I could have sat in that storm of anxiety. What am I gonna do next? How am I gonna get a job? Who's gonna hire me? And it was crazy because the medicine said, don't worry, don't worry, keep your feet on the ground, take a deep, deep, deep breath. We're gonna close this 25 year chapter and we're gonna open up this whole new chapter. So I was able to use microdosing to reinvent my life, overcome a substance dependency, and really find that the magic in life exists at this present moment. That the only thing we have is this conversation we're having here. What I did walking in through that door 10 minutes ago, that's gone. What's gonna happen an hour from now, who knows? So microdosing has really helped me to really harness that moment of presentness and be alive, right? So, what is microdosing, like I said? Microdosing is different for everyone in the sense that not everyone's protocol and not everyone's dosage is for everyone, right? My dosage is my dosage. It works for me. It might not work for you, right? My protocol is my protocol. It might not work for you, right? It depends what you're looking for. It really depends what your intentions are. To get on a effective and safe microdosing protocol, the first thing you really need to ask yourself is, why am I doing this? What are my intentions to microdose, right? There's many people that go in because they want something different. They want to stop hurting. They want to stop living in depressive states. There's other people that just want to be better. They want to find that best self. They want to look at themselves in the mirror every single morning and go, God, I am such a badass. Like, I got this, I'm gonna do this. This is, this is where I'm going. So, a couple of things that microdosing, and I forgot which way this is, left or right, or, hold on. All right, so I wanna go a couple of things that microdosing has done to me. Um, one, definitely improve mood, right? That, that, that improvement in cognitive function of being able to be happy with where I am and who I am right now at this moment, right? That self-love, that once we do that, once we're able to um, be comfortable with our own selves, I'm sorry, this isn't working. This is, technology is not my thing, microdosing and mushrooms are. No, Paul said it's this thing. Anybody? The projector's up there, yeah, but, all right, is it the computer? Can you see if it could, if, yeah, will it go? I'm really sorry. Uh, it is a, it's a slide, yeah. Right? <laughs> Here, you know what, I'm gonna go old school. So improve mood, right? That, that sense of today, right now, is where it's at. I'm gonna, we all decide our own mood, right? We, we decide how we feel. And if we decide to love and carry positive into the world, that's what comes back, right? If we decide that sort of anger, hate, animosity, and all these other negative feelings, at the end of the day, the only person that feels this is us, right? No one else is feeling that. So it sort of really has helped me enhance my mood, enhance 
um, my ability to find happiness in myself. It's also been really incredibly important in that creativity mode, right? That mode of that creative being, that being of open-mindedness, of, of thinking that anything is possible, that around every single corner there is a miracle. If we live that way, it's a grand way to sort of look at life, and microdosing has definitely helped me to do that. It's really helped me to increase focus, right? I have a really good client that I worked with me who, um, and we'll go back to microdosing protocols a little bit, but they started on a protocol um, of one day on, two days off, um, and I said, you know what, first day I felt really good, I felt in tune, I felt focused, I was getting things done. The second day, I sort of, it wasn't completely there. Like the first day, the third day, I found myself finding some other distractions. So they decided to go on a protocol that was four days on and three days off. Um, started microdosing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They would take days off integration, third, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. A month into it, he gets called into his boss's office and they're like, we need to talk to you. And he's like, well, what's up? He said, we need to figure out how your productivity has gone up 15% in the last month. And he said, um, the reason why is because I'm more focused. I'm completely laser focused in what I'm doing. I don't worry about deadlines anymore. I come into work thinking about the job, thinking about what we're doing. Go to the next one. Um, huh? It wants to work more. It does? It doesn't? It does? All right. So it's the bottom one, right? The uh, bottom one. Sometimes it just, it's just being silly sometimes. Right. Okay. Same time, you're good. Perfect. Um, enhanced problem solving agility. Again, when you're more present, when you're in that moment of now, when you're not thinking about the past, when you're not thinking about the future, you can be focused in that now and have that ability to really, really enhance that problem solving ability that we all have. Reduced anxiety, right? Again, that anxiety comes from living in the future, because let's be honest, you can't be anxious about the past, and you can't be depressed about the future, because it hasn't happened. So once you're able to sort of quell those anxious thoughts of, you know, what's going to happen a week from now? Well, why am I worried about what's going to happen a week from now? I've got to concentrate on what's happening right now, this moment, right? So it's, it's definitely helped me to reduce those anxious thoughts. Um, improved energy, right? I, I get a sense that because I'm microdosing, um, I'm more aware, I'm more in tune. Um, it, it's easier for me to focus on exercise. It's easier for me to focus on my nutrition. It's easier for me to focus on taking care of myself. So that's been a great improvement. Better social interaction. Um, again, it, it gives us that liberty to sort of be who we are, right? To be authentic, to be more comfortable in our own skin. And that's also a way to help be, you know, have better social interactions through microdosing. Um, there are some disorders that there's been studies that people have used to help microdosing with. Some people have been using microdosing to help with eating disorder, to help with, like I said, anxiety, depression. So there are a lot of studies that are being done. Um, enhanced physical sensation. There's nothing more like being in the present, being able to breathe, being able to get every sensation that you have in your body. Um, those are real important. And the fact that it's holistic well-being, right? That we're, it's, it's the alternative to going to a doctor who the potential is going to say, well, I don't know what you have, but why don't we try these pills? And if those don't work, then let's come back and try these other ones. Well, how about if I try what Mother Nature gave me, what the earth, what the universe has put in our path, to try to see if that can heal me. So that's definitely a way to go, because if not, it's, you go to a doctor and it's like, Doc, well, are those habit forming? Well, yeah, they could potentially be, and some you might even want to die to get off of them. Do they have side effects? Well, here, let's read the whole list of side effects that could potentially have. So there's a holistic way to healing ourselves through microdosing that a lot of people have come in touch with and have realized that this could be the great alternative that we're all looking for. Right? So I wanted to talk a little bit about dosage and protocol. Right? There's different protocols that are going on. Um, the most common protocol that's being used, it's called the Fadiman Protocol. Dr. James Fadiman is considered the godfather of microdosing. So the idea of the Fadiman protocol is that you do one day on, two days off. The dosage is between 0.1 milligram and 0.5 milligrams. 0.5 milligrams is a higher end of microdosing. I would consider that someone who either has a higher threshold or a higher tolerance level or someone who's been microdosing for a while. The idea of the Fadiman protocol is that that first day is a dosage day, right? That dosage day you're dosed, everything is wonderful, everything is beautiful, everything's just grand. 
That second day is a transition day. You're transitioning out of the medicine, right? You're sort of realizing, you know what? How did I deal with those situations, with those anxious thoughts, with those oppressive thoughts that I had yesterday? How did I deal with them? Let me transition them. And then that third day, that integration day, which any psychedelic journey, microdose, practice, whatever you're doing with psychedelics, the integration is the most important part of the process. It's, it's, it's the key to making sure you're getting the most out of whatever you want out of that psychedelic. So the Fatiman protocol calls for one day on, two days off. What I suggest, what I do is, I do this for about four to five weeks, and then I take a three-week break. You take a three-week full integration break where your tolerance comes down, you get to sit back in your real humanity of who am I, how did I deal with these situations, how do I address these problems that I had before. That's why those integration periods are really important. Those are, those are smart because then it gives you more time to journal. It gives you more time to say, you know what, maybe if I meditate a little bit more, I can find myself. It gives you that opportunity to find other healing modalities besides the microdosing, besides the mushrooms, that you can sort of continue into your life. The other protocol that's very popular is called the Stamets Protocol. This is, was conducted by Paul Stamets, very, very famous mycologist. If you've seen Fantastic Fungi, I'm sure you've recognized him. He's got a little mushroom hat on. He's got a beard. Um, wonderful, wonderful person. And he did studies where he would have people use niacin and lion's maid with, to stack with their microdosing. And his protocol calls for four days on, three days off. That's the protocol that I worked with that person who had the deadlines, which is constantly, the deadlines were in his head. He was able to sort of get those out of that through doing the um, Stamets protocol. And then the other protocol is a balanced protocol, which is going back to the same thing. This is citizen science, right? Microdosing is a really brand new healing modality that people are using. So there's not major studies, there's not major you know, uh, institutional documentation that has been done on this. So it's a lot of citizen science, and citizen science is journaling, finding out what flows for you. I tell people, what should you feel when you microdose? You really shouldn't feel anything. You shouldn't feel high, you shouldn't feel dizzy, you shouldn't feel, you know, elevated. What you should feel is that life is amazing, that life is beautiful, and that everything I need at this moment, I have in front of me. I don't need anything else. I have another great st story of a person who I got in a microdosing protocol who they came to this country at a very later age. They're very self-conscious about their accent, so they don't like to speak in public, which is the, the sort of something that, you know, they're frozen. They get frozen. Um, they start to microdose, and that first day, uh, her and her boss were doing an outsource call for about 25 people, and 10 minutes before, her boss texts her. He doesn't even call her. He doesn't sort of FaceTime. He's like, I can't do this. You have to do this. I have a conflict of interest. And she said for a second, she literally like froze and was like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? And she took a deep breath and she's like, wait a minute. All I'm doing is talking about my work. It's talking about my job. So some way the microdosing was able to make her be her conscious and not that self-conscious of my accent and are they going to understand me and am I going to be able to sort of c communicate what I'm doing? She said, no. Just go and speak. And afterwards, everyone was like, oh, my God, that was the best training we've had all week. Like, finally, someone told us not how to do it, but why to do it that way. And uh, from all everything she sort of senses, it was the microdosing that was able to give her that confidence in herself to say, you know what? I can do this. I, 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 I got this. So protocol is a bit about, about that citizen science, about finding that what I call the afterglow. If anybody here, have you ever, who's here had a psychedelic experience? No, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> if you've had a psychedelic experience, there is this sensation afterwards when you're coming down called the afterglow. And the afterglow is one of these beautiful sensations where you just really feel that life is amazing, that just being alive, being able to take a deep breath, being able to be connected with people, being able to just be alive is beautiful. I tell people that's what you need to look for in a microdosing practice, that afterglow, that sense that you wake up in the morning and go, man, life is good, today's it. Today I'm gonna get it done. Around every single corner there's a possibility of a miracle for me because there is. 
And if we live that way, if we think that way, it's easier to sort of get through life with everything else that we sort of go through. Um, effective ways to get on a microdosing protocol, start low. It's like there's, 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 a, there's an adage or a, a, a motto in the psychedelic world that you can always take more, you can never take less. So once you're past that taking too much, you know, you can hold on for the ride depending on how much you did. Um, so definitely start low. I tell people start 100, 150 milligrams. Um, get on a good week, two weeks of finding that protocol that works for you. Don't mess with your dosage, right? Sometimes people are like, oh, you know what? I'm going to try just a little bit more. It's just no. Let the medicine take its course. Make sure your intentions are that roadmap that you want the medicine to have. So that's incredibly important. Stick to a schedule. Like I said, this isn't a one-day thing. This isn't, I had a bad day. Let me take some mushrooms to see if my day gets better. No, that's not what it's about. That's not microdosing, right? That's finding some way to escape what you had, right? So keeping on a schedule, right? Keeping on a good schedule, journaling. Journaling because we are citizen scientists is the most important part. Know at what time you dosed. Know how much you dosed. Know how you felt. And a lot of people think journaling is like, oh my God, I gotta sit there and write a book about what, no. Journaling is very easy. Journaling is, what are your intentions in the morning? I intend to be a better person. I intend to not let my thoughts overrun me. I intend to smile at a couple people today. I intend to go into the supermarket and say good morning. Those are your intentions. And at the end of the day, I just write what my high and my low was. What was my high? Something I want to share with my grandkids one day about what happened today. And what's my low? Something that maybe I could work on better. Something that maybe, you know what, if it was in a different situation, I could have acted a little bit different. So sticking to a schedule is incredibly important. Again, monitoring and reflecting. It's, it's, it's us, right? We're healing ourselves, right? We have to be able to understand what we're going through, what we're feeling, right, what we're looking for. So that's, that monitoring, that reflecting is, is, is really, really important. Um, mindset and environment, right? It's, I go back to the same thing. This is just a tool in your toolbox. If you're Mindset is not the right way to use the right tool. The tool's not going to work, right? It's about your mindset. You set yourself for success in your microdosing protocol, right? What the microdosing is going to do is the mushrooms are going to open up your perceptions a little bit. They're going to open up those neural pathways. They're going to connect new neural ways that maybe weren't connected before. That's what that'll do. But again, it's all about your own mindset. If you go in with a mindset where it's like everything's shit, everything's horrible, then potentially that's what it could be. But if you go in with an open heart, with a sense of like, you know, I can be the best person I can be today, then that, that mindset will sort of help you stay forward. Stay informed. Um, educate yourself. Like I tell people, don't microdose because I microdose. Like don't microdose because you came and you heard some workshop and some guy said, oh yeah, he reinvented his life through microdosing. I'm going to start microdosing. No, do a little homework. Do a little homework. Find out what's going on. Realize what you want to microdose, how much you want to microdose. I mean, I've been on protocols of psilocybin, and I've been on protocols of LSD. They're two totally different, different, very different sensations, everything. Yeah, so again, educate yourself, right? Have those intentions. Know that that day that when you start to microdose, there's no questions. You know what you're doing. You have the confidence in yourself that this is going to work that you're doing this for the right reason. So that mindset and that education and that keeping abreast of what's going on, what studies are going on. I have a Google alert on microdosing, right? Just to sort of know, you know, what new studies are going on, what people are doing, what's happening, you know, what reactions people are having. Um, purity. Um, sourcing is obviously the biggest question, right? I can talk to people about microdosing all day long. Their question is gonna be, where can I get mushrooms? To me, what most people should do is the power of your healing should be in your hands. I'm a big, big proponent of growing your own mushrooms. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. They have little grow kits now that you can have a personal grow kit. You don't have to grow for everyone. If you grow a tub and you have friends and you want to share the medicine that the earth has given you, then you can do that. But I'm a big believer and big advocate of growing your own medicine because it's your medicine, you're, it's your healing. Obviously, if you're like, well, I don't have time, I don't have room, definitely find a reliable source, right? Find someone who you know, who
who's microdose, who you trust, who they have someone who they trust. That would be the second one. Then there are companies out there, Cultivating Wisdom, the company that I have, we've tried to affiliate with companies who I myself have sat down with the owners. Two, I've gone to their factories and I get a sense that they're reliable. They're doing what I call um, something that the medicine has taught me is that we need to go out and manifest love you money and not fuck you money. Right. If we do that as humans, if we manifest this type of money that it's for me, but it's also for you, because if I get, you get. Because if I invest in myself, I can give back. That's a lot better way to live than chasing any other type of money. Right. So what I've done is that I've done, I've created a sense of community affiliates, right, through cultivating wisdom, who we feel are doing this with their heart. Right. They're not doing this to sort of make a whole bunch of money. They're doing it because they, 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 they love the power of the mushrooms. They love what the mushrooms have done. They love the healing powers um, that they've given to people. So it's, it's, it's don't go and buy mushrooms from Joe Schmo on Instagram. It's just, it's just not smart, right? It's, it's the medicine will find you, right? Somehow the medicine will always end up finding you when you're ready because you have the right intentions, because you, you have the right thoughts, because you want to do this the right way. Um, I think what was the other slide that I had? Is that it? That was the last one. Um, again, it's, it's, the universe was very kind with what it gave us. And unfortunately, we found ourselves in a situation back in the 60s where there was a government that said, wait a minute, hold on a second. There's a lot of people asking a lot of questions. People are saying, why are we in a war that we're not even halfway around the world? There was women saying, well, wait a minute, we need equal rights. Um, there's a lot of you know, talk about racism going on. So the government said, wait a minute, let's sort of let's schedule these things as drugs um, and forbid you know, people from having them and having access to them. And that's where we were for a while until fortunately in late 1990s, Johns Hopkins decided to say, forget it, we're gonna start doing studies with psilocybin uh, for people at end of life care. Um, and next thing we know, we have Emory University who has a whole division dedicated to psychedelics. It's not one professor, two professor teaching psychedelics. It's a whole division dedicated to psychedelics. You have NYU has a division of psychedelics. Ohio State has a division of psychedelics. Berkeley University has a division of psychedelics. So we're realizing that psychedelic medicine has this incredible power of awakening the human in mind of really being in touch with who we are, right? So what I say is, look, I get it, it's a crime, right? But if healing myself, if having the power of being a better person is a crime, then I'm gonna be a bad boy. <laughs> I'm gonna be a bad boy, yeah. Power, power to the people, our ancestors have used these medicines for centuries and centuries and centuries. Let's give the power back to the people. Let's teach people, let's educate people, right? If you use psychedelics, I get it. Not everyone can wear a shirt that says microdosing, right? Your boss is gonna be like, right, microdosing, is that drugs? Are you on drugs? Yeah. But if you can, manifest this because you might open up somebody's possibility to say, wait a minute, you microdose? I've heard about that. I've read about that. Can you cultivate me with some wisdom? Right? Look, the other couple days ago, and, and all types of conversations, I'm at the supermarket, and some woman looks at me, she goes, do you microdose? And I went, yeah, how can you tell, because of my smile? She goes, no, because of your shirt, dumbass. And I went, oh, okay, I got you. And she said, before microdosing, I would have a bottle of wine every day. I'd get home, have a glass, because I want to forget work, I want to forget the kids, whatever, I'm going to have a second glass, and I'm not going to leave that little bit left in the bottle. So I was downing a bottle of wine every day. I wasn't present for anybody. I wasn't present for myself, for my son, for my husband, for work. She says, now I microdose. I microdose every three days. She goes, I've never been so present. I've never been so aware, so in touch with who I am, what I am, what my kids are, what I need to be for them, what I need to be for my husband, what I need to be for my job. So it's, it's that awakening, right? It's that conscious awakening that we all need to have. Right? We're also sometimes lost in, in this or you know, 10,000 things that we have in our mind that we don't have that time for what the medicine told me to do. Put our feet on the ground, take a deep, deep breath, and realize that everything we have is beautiful. Everything we have is grand. What we have at this moment is right here. So um, again, 
Microdosing changed my life. It helped me to reinvent myself. It helped me to get over a cannabis addiction that really had me gripped. And I had tried for a long time in my life to say, I don't need that. It gave me that mental power. It gave me that mental power. So um, I'm here to answer any questions about microdosing that you guys have. We'll start with you. Yeah, so um, it's, it's a great question. It's, it's a great question. Um, and being an addict, right, especially to a substance, there's always that sense of where is this new high? So my, my first intention, right, was a recreational curiosity. That was it, right? How did it happen? Someone very close to me had had an experience at Martha's Vineyard's 4th of July. They were like, you don't understand. <laughs> I felt like a child. Like my kids who an hour ago I wanted to kill them, I realized why I loved them so much. And my husband, I looked at him and I'm like, oh my God, I have the best man in the world. And the fireworks were going off and it was amazing. And I was like, wait a minute, that sounds pretty cool. That sounds like a cool high, you know? <laughs> Couple weeks later, we used to do this bike ride here in Atlanta called m and it's about two, 300 people would ride, and I'm riding next to this one person, and he's just got a smile from ear to ear, and I'm like, dude, are you okay? He's like, I just had some mushrooms. I feel like a kid riding his bike for the first time. So for me, for me, my first intention was that recreation of curiosity. That being said, I understand that there's a lot of people who are very scared or have trepidations of trying psychedelics. I get it. Why? Because there's people that come up to me and say, Caesar. I had an experience back in college, and there's no way ever I want to live that again. I'm like, okay, but I'm going to have two questions. One, how much did you have? I have no clue. That's the first problem. What were your intentions? I didn't really have any. That's, that's the worst problem. So it's sort of intentions are a big part of a psychedelic journey, right? What is it that you want out of this, right? Because if not... It's very easy because your mind is opening up to things that maybe you weren't aware of that were there that might be hidden, especially on a big journey, that you might be going down some roads you're not ready yet to confront, right? And look, a big psychedelic journey is not going to take you to Nightmare on Elm Street. It's not going to take you to Freddy Krueger's house. It's not going to take you to Jason's house. It's going to take you to your own demons. And are you ready to confront those? Are you ready to sort of look at them in the eye and go, why are you here? What is it that you want from me? What is it that you want to teach me? So it's, it's a great question because, yes, people are scared, all right? And in that sense, the idea is educate yourself, right? We overcome fear by knowledge, by wisdom, right? We overcome fear by talking to other people, by sharing stories, right, by communicating. There's a great psychedelic association here in Atlanta. They meet Wednesday nights over at uh, Cultured South. Culture South, Creature Comforts, Culture South. I remember the name. It's just right down the street. Every night, every Wednesday night, 7:30. Incredible, incredible group of people. I always love to use the analogy that we live in Atlanta, right? We live in Georgia. It's very divided, incredibly divided. I mean, our elections are decided by hundreds of votes, not thousands of votes. But this is a place and this is a time where you know that in there there are people that are red, there are people that are blue. There are people that are pro-life, there are people that are pro-choice, there are people that are anti-gun, there are people that are pro-gun. It doesn't matter. Like, there's something about psychedelics that makes us human, that makes us realize that humanity is what it's about. It doesn't matter what color we are. It doesn't matter what religion we are. It doesn't matter what nationality we are. At the end of the day, the only thing we all, every single one of us in this room has in common, no doubt, is that we're humans. Every single one of us. And if that's the only thing we have in common, then that's what we should tie on to and connect to that mycelium like the mushrooms do, right? To sort of have that human connection. Because if not, we're continuously being divided. And to me, that's something that psychedelics and microdosing has helped me to do, right? To sort of really be aware and happy with life. To be able to sort of walk in the supermarket and say good morning to everybody because it just makes their life better, makes my life better. So there's a couple companies I work with, Muse, uh, M-U-S-E, they're on Instagram, they're, they're a really, really good uh, company, uh, come and see me, I'll give you a code for them to use, it's really good. Uh, there's a couple other companies, Entheo and One, 
um, that we've been working with and sourcing with. So if you guys want, I'll be up at the booth afterwards. I'll, I could give you guys some, some details on how to get in touch with them. Correct. Correct. They're not. They're not. And that's why, again, it's a little bit citizen science. It's a little bit about knowledge. It's a little bit about knowing the strains of mushrooms you're getting, right? There's a difference between uh, golden teacher mushroom, which is a very calming, very warm, knowledgeable mushroom type, and there's mushrooms like penis-heavy mushrooms, which are on the higher end of psilocybin count in them, which sort of are a lot stronger mushrooms. The idea is to sort of keep your mushrooms the same, right? If you're, if you're microdosing golden teachers, continue to microdose golden teachers. You know, if you can, measure out your own dosage, right? I'm a big proponent of growing your own medicine, having your own medicine, grinding your own medicine, weighing your own medicine, knowing exactly how much dosage you are getting every single time. So you're right, it, it, there is, it is like cannabis where it's just all over the place. It's, you know, starting slow with whatever mushrooms you get, getting from, again, getting them from a reliable source, right, knowing what type of mushrooms you're getting. And that's citizen science, right? That's citizen science of continuing the journal, continuing to sort of keep your dosage consistent, you know, over a, a long period of time. Yeah, well, ob obviously two, two totally different experiences, right? In the sense of um, microdosing is subperceptual or subpsychedelic, as they call it. Um, I've had several in the year I've, I, I've been, you know, um, microdosing up sort of psychedelics have come into my life. I've had four big, big experiences. Um, one of them, the first one which I had my birthday of last year, um, I would call probably one of the most profound experiences of my life. Um, because it opened me up to a lot of things that I didn't realize about myself. It took me to some dark places of my past childhood, which I needed to address, right? Which I needed to see with my own eyes and realize what those episodes in my life were doing to me now as an adult. Um, I've also had journeys where I went in with really good intentions of, you know, figuring out, um, you know, where I was going next, where my business was going next. And the medicine was like, yeah, well, those are your intentions, but we got to show you something else. And this is, <laughs> this is what we're going to do. And it was at a time where I, I just become completely enthralled with, with, with work, with this new business, with this new company. And, you know, I had sort of my exercise routine, you know, had gone to the side. The nutritional routine had gone to the side. And I literally was a cancer patient dying for three hours. And it felt like I was dying. I was looking at myself in the mirror. And it's like, you're going to die. And towards the end, the medicine said, look, I want to be honest with you. Anything you've done before today to get sick, there's nothing you can do. You're going to get sick. But moving forward, there's so much that you can do to not get sick. Get back on your exercise routine. Get back to your nutritional program. Because all these other dreams that you have of other things, you might not be around to see them. So the difference between that microdosing and that macrodosing is that macrodosing can really open you up to a lot of experiences, a lot of situations that yes, they're mind altering, but they're, they're, they're situations that maybe your mind needs you to see. Where the microdosing is more, you know, let me sort of at least get in touch with who I am, let me live in that now, let me be authentic, let me be the best person that I can be without having to go deep inside my heart, my soul, my brain to try to, you know, see what the medicine wants to teach me. Correct, correct. Whereas I, I feel like microdosing could be more uh, kind of tuned in to integration. Yes, so yeah. And that's why like, I kind of feel that <coughs> micro, the macrodose is um, something that I personally am more drawn towards than microdose. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it's time for me to kind of pay attention and figure out how to kind of integrate that into my life. And I feel like microdose mm -hmm. is more you know, beneficial in integration. Definitely. So Definitely. Like the Definitely. 
Definitely. And, and the other thing is that sort of um, microdosing is a little bit less, uh, I don't want to use the word offensive, but people, people will get a tendency more to say, you know what, I'm going to microdose before I'm going to macrodose. Right. So and for me, it was it was that way. Like I had a medium dose. Right. Which was that was the awakening. Then I realized that microdosing was the thing I needed to do. And then afterwards, I've I had bigger journeys and then have used the microdosing to sort of tune in, you know, those macrodosing experience. I mean, microdosing is, you know, turning up that volume a little bit. Macrodosing is like I'm going to crank that thing all the way up to see what happens. Yeah. 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 Uh, the medicine will let you know. I'm a big believer. I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a huge, huge believer that the medicine will let you know. Look, I didn't know. I went into my microdosing practice not having, you know what, I'm going to have a macrodose. And it just so happens that two days before my birthday, I just was going through YouTube and there's this documentary between Deepak Chopra and Paul Stamets and they're talking about their heroic journeys and the medicine was like, and now you're ready. So it's, 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 listen, listen to the medicine, listen to yourself. Right, don't don't jump into anything, you know, just you'll you'll know. Yeah, two words. I do, I do. I, I, I coach people um, through my personal experience, guiding them to get on a safe and effective protocol. I sort of, you know, we go through what their intentions are, what they're looking to do. Um, you know, what they want the long-term outcome to be, you know, where they see themselves, um, where they hope to be, you know, six months down the road. Um, so we'll definitely work with people that way. We're also sort of doing some, some group coaching going on. Correct. Again, it's, it's, it's what the person's intentions are, right? The, the work comes from the intentions, what the people, what the person, what the client wants out of their psychedelic experience, right? And it's, 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 it's hearing them out. It's listening to them, right? Because there are people who are wanting to microdose because they just want to feel better. There's people who really want this because they feel like they want to heal. So each person obviously is going to be a little bit different because of what their intentions are, because of what they're looking for. Definitely, definitely trauma, like childhood trauma is, is going to be worked out through big dosage, right, through, through macro dosage with, with good contention, right, with people around you who are going to hold space, who are going to be able to sort of be there for you and, and, and have you get that sense of safety. That's, I would recommend that part of trying to heal trauma, right? If someone's saying, well, I just, I want to be a little bit more creative, right? I want to be more in tune with myself. Or... Even the addiction, right? That substance dependency where it's maybe if, if the microdosing creates a little bit of consciousness where at that moment, instead of saying, I want to do this, you ask yourself, do I really need this? Or you say, you know what? Not right now. That I feel might be a little bit easier to work through microdosing than having someone have and go on a big journey, you know, for something that maybe they can start to work on on a lower dosage. And what's the what? Um, so I've, I've been doing about every three months. And again, for some reason, somehow the medicine finds me. It's just one of these situations. Um, and that goes back to the story of the biggest dosage. Uh, this was August, August of this year. Um, I get invited to go down to a retreat in Jamaica. 
And they said, hey, can you come down? We're starting this new retreat. We'd love for you to sort of help us promote the retreat. I was like, sure, you know what I mean? Sort of, okay. And, and, and I had some intentions. I was going through some stuff that I was working on that, that, that I, I thought the retreat would really help me you know, answer some questions. Um, not realizing that this was a really deep, deep dive retreat. Like the first day right off the plane, it's like, okay, we're gonna work on some stuff. We need you to take four grams. And I was like, whoa. Like I just got off a plane. That's like a lot. Of, that's a lot of medicine, and they're like, "We're we're gonna we're working. Like this is a this is a work retreat. Like we're gonna we're gonna find stuff." I was like, "Okay." That first day again, four grams is a is a that's a that's a good size dosage. That's a good size dosage that opens up a lot of things. It put me in places where I needed to sort of be to answer questions about myself, about where I was going, you know. And then afterwards, I go back to the doctor, and I'm like, "Yeah, I just." You know, this is awesome, but I just, I have more questions where other, you know, journeys that I've had on those doses, I've come out, you know, with a little bit more answers than questions. And here I was like, well, I just, I don't know, I have a lot of questions. And she was like, well, it's a four day retreat. You didn't expect to be healed in one day and then what, just relax the whole rest of the time and hang out by the pool? We're going to do some work. So I was like, okay. Next day, she said, okay, you ready to go deep? I was like, yeah. She goes, we're going to do seven grams. And I was like, okay, I guess if, if I'm here, I'm here for a reason. This is a doctor. I trust her. Let's go. And what, what an amazing, powerful journey that was. It sort of, it started very deep. It started almost darkish, right, in the sense of like, go ahead, go to sleep. If that's what you want to do. Do it here in Jamaica. How poetic would that be? Just end it all here, you know, then you don't have to worry about bills, you don't have to worry about, you know, this work, you don't have to worry about your clients, you don't have to, it doesn't matter. And part of me was like, no, 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 that's not, that's uh, what's, what's going on. And when the doctor came in, she was like, okay, if, if that's the case, then what's your legacy? And not for your kids, not for the people around you, not for the people that believe in you, but your legacy. And something clicked like right away. Like, what is it, what are these demons that I have that I'm dealing with? Who is, who is telling me that I can't? Like, who is doubting me? I'm doubting me, right? My ego's doubting me. And if I can't control that ego, then it's no good. I ran out of the room, <laughs> dove into the pool, came out the other side like I was rebirthed. And I'm like, of course, this is what it's about. I'm going to retreat in Jamaica. If I don't believe in myself, who's going to believe in me? This is what it's about. And on that same trip, I was able to have the immense blessing to sit with 5-MeO-DMT. Uh, if nobody knows what 5-MeO-DMT is, it's Bufo. Um, it's frog venom. It's these frogs that uh, are in uh, New Mexico and Mexico. They secrete the venom from it. The venom is psychoactive. Um, and I got to sit with 5-MeO-DMT. And that was, that was a blissful, amazing, incredible experience where I realized that I'm God, you're God, he's God, she's God, she's God. We're all God. We're all our own God. And if you want to believe in another God, that's, that's fine. But unless you believe in yourself as a true God, everything else is just, you're going through the motions. So it's seven grams <laughs> was the answer to that. And I actually just did a wonderful journey. Um, if you guys want, January 18th, January 18th, um, the East Institute, which is a healing center here in Atlanta, we're going to have a wonderful microdosing X event. They have a wonderful, wonderful place. They do group healings. I was just in their facility, and we did a wonderful um, group healing. Not the Saturday, yeah, the week ago yesterday. So that was the last journey. So short, long. That was a long answer to your question. Uh, about every three months, it seems that sort of the medicine is called to me, and that seven gram journey, which um, I, I don't know if I'd ever do that much medicine again. That was that was definitely a lot. So uh, the, the, the first question is more adverse effects that we've seen through microdosing or people who shouldn't do it. Um, that's a good question. I, I, from research I've done, people who have bipolar disorder is, is sort of not schizophrenia. Um, you know, I'm a big believer that it's higher level of disorders like that, you really should go through your doctor, right? You really should at least, you know, 
have a conversation with your doctor and say, look, this is something that I've read about. I've seen that some people, this has helped. What do you think? Um, I'd say that. And I've, I've been able to unpack my journeys through conversations, through talking to people, through having honest experiences, through saying, you know what? I saw, felt this, felt that. I'm working through this. I'm working through that. It's these human connections, right, that sometimes we sort of try to figure out our own things ourselves that, that we sort of block ourselves off. So for, for me, for me, and again, this is just my personal experience, I've been able to sort of unpack myself and reinvent myself through these human connections that I've made. Well, I can hardly hear you, but pick it up. Pick it up. I, I would definitely say golden teachers. I would say golden teachers is just a softer type of, of, of mushroom. It's a little bit kinder. You know, it's not, you're not going to touch peak levels sometimes that you can get with penis envy. Um, but again, it's citizen science, right? There could be someone where penis envy might sort of really put them in that flow state, and golden teachers doesn't. So it's sort of, it, it's a bit finding what your sweet spot is, and once you find it, just keep that consistent. I think there's, there's some similar effects, right? There's some mushrooms that are going to give you a lot of higher visuals, a lot of higher sensations, right, than other mushrooms. Um, again, I would study up, right? I, I've personally used golden teachers. I've personally used um, albinos, and I've personally used um, penis envy. Again, the penis envy is on a lot higher level, a lot more sensations, a lot more visuals. The golden teachers have been a little bit more kind, a little bit more gentle, a little bit more loving. So it's, it's every single strain, right? There's two, I think it's 270,000 strains of mushrooms, of which I think 10% are psychoactive. So, you know, every mushroom might have a little different effect on you. I would, I would say Golden Teachers. I love Golden Teachers. I personally love Golden Teachers. If you can find Golden Teachers, those, those are my favorite mushrooms. For microdosing, or for the the East Institute, I I the East Institute, yeah the East Institute, yeah the East Institute. Um, you know I've worked I've worked hand in hand with them. Um, I've I've sat down with both owners and sort of really had heart to heart conversations. Um, and I've just I really believe in how they're tying um, these indigenous traditions to modern medicine. Right, it's not this whole clinical. You know, it's 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 a pill. We need to have a clinical setting, and no, there's there's a clinical theory, there's a clinical evidence, but at the same time, really going back to these roots of these indigenous practice, these sort of, it's you know, it's taking back the medicine to where it came from is is, is really what they want to do. So the East Institute is a, is a beautiful, beautiful place. January 18th, we're having, a, we're having a workshop. We're having them, we're having a couple people from Microdose Institute that are coming in um, to sort of lecture on, on the past, the present, and the future of psychedelics and, and definitely talking about microdosing. Yeah. Anyone else? I did microdose today. Today is a microdose day, so that's why I'm smiling. That's why I'm... Um, who, who? Yeah, so I appreciate you guys. Um, if you want to check us out, uh, Instagram, it's cultivating.wisdom. Um, it's a lot of me uh, just sort of, you know, 
sharing my experiences. Um, CultivatingWisdom.net is the apparel brand. Part of our proceeds are going to Vet Solution, which is an organization that's helping veterans find psychedelic therapy and psychedelic healing through uh, through that. So, you know, big love out to, to our military uh, members and vets. Um, and then CaesarMarin.net, uh, you can find me there if you know somebody who needs healing, who wants some coaching, who wants someone to smile at. Uh, and if you have um, parents that are older and you need uh, someone to talk to your parents about microdosing, I do have gray hairs. They can relate to me. You know what? They've lost their job. I lost my job. They've been divorced. I've been divorced. So um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so, so much. Enjoy the rest of the night. Of course. Yeah. Thank you so much, Caesar. Thank you, brother. What a pleasure. Oh, man. I appreciate so it. Of course, man. It's always my pleasure to be here.